Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Ladies and gentlemen. The President of the Savage States of America. Uh, if only they were still the Savage States of America. You know, your grandfather's age. You know, when America defeated Hitler. You know, the Savage States of America. Well, we're not. We are not. We are the demoralized, invaded, and violated America. Sitting here like a beaten housewife, asking all of our enemies, internal and external, not to hit us again. And we all pray to God that Donald Trump wins and, let's say, makes America great again. Let's make it real simple for you. And Donald will be on this show in about 30 minutes to take your questions. If we get to them, I doubt it, because I have many of my own. We will only have a few 10, 12 minutes with him. Now, I do news views and reviews on this show I have for years. I don't just do politics. I love politics. We're in an election year. Obviously, it's all that's on most people's minds one way or the other. Well, there's a lot of news out there and a lot of views out there, particularly mine. And one of the other stories I want to talk about is this uh, Chapo capture. It somewhat ties into Donald Trump. The most notorious drug cartel leader in the world is captured in Mexico by Mexican Marines in a shootout that you have to see. I linked it up on michaelsavage.com. It's, you know, you watch in the movies, or you watch a movie about the last sni American sniper. And so, uh, it's a movie. But this is video footage of a shootout, and you see the Mexican Marines, some in combat gear, some in sportswear. These guys, you know what it's like to be in a shootout? I don't. They do. Heavy-duty machine guns firing into a, crowd, into a room. You don't know who's in there. Well, anyway, they caught him, and he's going to be extradited. That's if he ever gets to the extradition point to America. And it's a big story because... An American actor known to be a troublemaking, anti-American lout of all uh, varieties, the lowest of the low varieties, set up an interview with him. His name is Sean Penn, a grandstander, and uh, did the interview and, of course, thought that he wasn't being tracked, but apparently the uh, DEA was tracking Sean Penn, who led him right to this notorious drug lord. Well, hey, everyone's saying, what's going to happen now? Well, I have my own opinions as to why nothing will happen to Sean Penn, because I think Sean Penn is as likely a rat for the DEA or CIA as anything else. It's the only explanation for how he got there, how he was protected there, and how he's going to survive this, only to come out as a, let's say, all-around no-good Nick again. Another topic. Another topic in my news views and reviews, before we get Donald Trump on the show, where I have some great questions... I suggest you uh, text your friends or whatever you do on Facebook or Twitter, however you do it, and tell them to listen to the show in about 25 minutes now. I saw a movie last night called Joy. Now, I don't go to the movies. I watch them on TV. I'm an inveterate, crazy movie watcher. It's one of the, pardon me, ways I relax. And as you know, I live in, in L.A. part-time, and I have some friends in the movie business. They're never going to be named because they're all conservatives. In a, in a city where there is a boycott against anyone who doesn't hate America. i got to tell you, there's a lot of actors and producers and directors down there who actually still love America, but they're living in a Stalinist camp. They're afraid to express their love for America, as are most people in the corporate and academic and governmental worlds. They're living in a Stalinist America under this left-wing fascism where people are afraid to express themselves. Thank God we still have... Uh, what we call secret ballots in America. Maybe one day we'll be like Kim Jong-il's North Korea, where people won't even be able to have a secret ballot. We'll have to prove you voted for the party leader. Who knows? So anyway, one of the movies I went to see, because I read the review on Breitbart, was a, a movie called Joy. It's about a poor Long Island housewife who invel invents, of all things, a self-ringing mop. Boring, right? Wrong. Well, it starts out slowly. It's somewhat corny. But as the story evolves, it's told about a woman's true grit, her refusal to not take no for an answer, how she overcomes every obstacle a new business owner can ever face, from people who say no to a manufacturer who steals her patents and her molds. 
And what it is, it's an American success story. Now, I don't recommend you go see it because Jennifer Lawrence is an all-around left-wing fanatic. <laughs> but I went last night because I knew nobody would be in the theater. I heard it's a bomb. I don't know why. She's a good actress. Robert De Niro plays the father. He does a good job. Everyone in this movie is great because I enjoyed them in the last movie they were in. I love them in American Hustle. I mean, that's why I went. I love the cast in American Hustle. In fact, that's where I heard David Bowie's song, Gene Genie, right? So let's have a little song for David Bowie. In memory of David Bowie. Yeah, I'm one of those guys who lived through the 60s, and there was always, like, meanings to the lyrics in all of these obscure rock and roll songs, like by the Beatles. I never understood what they were talking about. Everyone knew what they were talking about. They were all stoned out of their mind, and I wasn't. I guess you have to be high to understand the music, but I like the, li the, the music and don't understand the lyrics. But the movie Joy is something I'm going to talk about because it's the life of Miracle Mop creator Joy Magnano, who is an actual real person who actually was that personality, and I think it's worth talking about because it shows a woman who invents a product, creates the product, builds the product, sacrifices, raises money from a family. In other words, like a small business person, anyone in America who starts a donut shop or a, a yogurt shop or whatever it may be, what you have to overcome. And there's no government to help her. There's no crying on anyone's shoulder when things fail. She loses it all and bounces back from the bottom. And that's something I learned when I was a kid growing up. And I'm not boasting about it. I grew up immigrant son. And the men who made it a little bit, a little bit of success in America always told us young guys when we were coming up the same story. 12 years old, 13, 14, maybe 14 years old. We'd hang around the toughest guy in the crowd. He owned the bar on the Upper East Side. Believe it or not, all the other men were small merchants. And uh, none of them had even made it into the professional class. None of them were doctors. None of them were lawyers of the ones I knew. This guy was a tough street kid who owned a bar in Yorktown. Well, he was the one that the boys gravitated to. We used to love to listen to his stories because boys tend to hang around the toughest guys. That's who they like. And he always told us the same story. He told us the same thing. He said, if you get into a fight, don't worry about it. The most you're going to lose is a tooth. But if you run away from a fight, you'll lose your 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 dignity we didn't even know what he meant but we kind of got it no one talks like that anymore all you could do is lose a, lose a tooth well today you can get shot and killed because it's not a it's not like that anymore but number two he also also told us he said do you know the richest guys i know and who knows if they were really rich but the richest guys i know have all lost their fortunes at some time but he said kids listen to me they all bounced back he said, listen to what I'm saying to you. The words are bounced back. Anyone can be knocked down, and anyone can stay down. But the winners get up. They bounce back. And that's what I'm trying to tell you about today. Because Donald Trump, in many ways, in his motto, Make America Great Again, is trying to tell America, get off the floor. Don't let the liberal wimps keep you down. And it's time for us to bounce back. It's somewhat related it's an inspirational story. It's all related in my own pastiche, in my, the pastiche of my own mind. News, views, and reviews on the Savage Nation. Phone number is 855-407-282. Uh, I don't want to really get into the Golden Globes. I watched this guy, Ricky Gervais, for a while. He's sort of um, uh, Dean Martin meets Benny Hill. I, I don't understand why he's considered so funny, but they're good lines. Whoever wrote them for him is a good uh, They're good writers. And with the glass of beer on the thing with the Golden Globes, very funny. And saying, hello, all of you drug addicts. We all like that. Play clip number two, Robert. Here is the opening to the Golden Globes event last night from the host, Ricky Gervais. Shut up, you disgusting, pill-popping, sexual deviant scum. I want to do this monologue and then go into hiding, okay? Not even Sean Penn will find me. Okay, so I don't really know who he is. He's funny. He's got a great delivery. Sort of, as I said, Dean Martin meets Benny Hill. It's an original to the Savage Nation. So we're going to be in a lot of places together today, this Monday, January the 11th, 2016, on the Savage Nation. What would you like me to ask Donald Trump? Because that's all you, you want to talk about. I have my own questions. I may not even ask your question, but I'll tell you what. Line up. Line up outside the door of the Savage Nation. If you could ask Donald Trump a single question, what would it be? The phone number here is 
855-407-282. When I come back, I'll tell you what I'm going to ask him, and then we'll wait for his answers right here on The Savage Nation. things that we're talking about but we're really waiting for the main act here in the savage nation and that's donald trump arriving momentarily stepping off his uh, 757 right into our studios here in the studio of our mind on the savage nation i mean you know i'm a supporter of donald i have been from the beginning i i was for him long before anyone thought he could win the others made believe that they didn't know him they didn't like him they weren't going to support him they laughed at him then all of a sudden as his poll numbers went up, all of the other so-called conservatives are be suddenly became Donald Trump supporters. When uh, in fact they were polishing, uh, uh, let us say, Ted Cruz's boots or Rubio's ice cream truck for so many months. And the reason I like Trump is real simple: rich, yes, self-made, absolutely, and honest as honest can be. You don't understand this. You think that because a guy is rich, he stole it from someone. That's the opposite of the American ethos. You think because a guy is rich that he's untrustworthy. Well, usually the opposite is true. I found people who've made their own livings are generally more trustworthy than people on the bottom who are desperate. I've always seen that. I'll tell you something funny. When I was a poor school teacher in New York City in the 1960s, I remember that I voted, if I remember correctly, they, I was a kid. What did I know? I was a liberal. Didn't know anything. They say if you're not a liberal at 20, you have no uh, no heart. If you're still liberal at 40, you have no mind, which is 100% true, but I would change it. That if you're not a liberal at 10, uh, you have no heart. And if you're still a liberal at 20, you, you have no mind because things have speeded up a little bit. Anyone who's still a liberal at 20 is a moron altogether. What, they want to give away more of their money? What do all these billionaires love liberals for? The answer is they don't pay taxes. You think that Zuckerberg pays his fair share? Do you think that Microsoft pays their fair share? We've gone through this a hundred times. The reason they support the liberal regime is because they get away with not paying billions of dollars in taxes by using the triple Irish or quadruple Dutch methodology of foreign holding companies. That's the only reason they support the Obama administration or Hillary is because they're going to get away with more, more tax evasion, in my estimation. Many people are social liberals and fiscal conservatives. And by the way, Donald may be a social liberal. I don't really know that much about his social beliefs. But I will take a fiscal conservative over a runaway crazy spender, printer of money like Obama, and also take a man who loves the military, which Donald does, over a man who has gutted the military like Barry has done. There's a lot of reasons, okay? Now, <clears throat> news, views, and reviews. I told you we were going to review the movie Joy, which I may not even get to till the next hour, by the way, but I have to review it again for another number of reasons. And then I played a piece from last night's <clears throat> Golden Globes, which I watched for 20 minutes. And this Richie Gervais, okay, he's a British comedian. He thinks he's droll. I get it. And for that reason, he's cool. I get it. But there was something about him I didn't like, and now I'll tell you why you're going to get it. Yes, I said it's Benny Hill meets Dean Martin. But there was something about him that I didn't relate to, no matter how good the lines were. He says he's living with his partner of 32 years, a woman, thank God, named Jane Fallon. That's the good news. But he says they chose not to marry because there's no point in us having an actual ceremony before the eyes of God because there is no God. Now you know why they love him in Hollywood. Wait, it gets even better. Or have children because, quote, they didn't fancy dedicating 16 years of our lives and there are too many children, of course, close quote. Put an X through Ricky Gervais. And now understand how you make it in Hollywood, a land where God is dead and children are even more dead. This is the Savage Nation. Let's take a couple of callers on what you want me to ask Donald Trump. I don't think we're going to get to these. I think I'm going to read you the questions. One, ask Trump about Dem voter fraud. That's from FTL in Florida. JR, Detroit, how do you stand on man-made climate change? From KSFO in San Fran Frico, what's Trump's strategy on college tuition? From J.R., Detroit, ask if Trump realizes how many people looked at him as only hope. SBA Radio, how would you get America out of debt? J.R., Detroit, would you go after Hillary criminally? Uh, it seems we only have WJR as an affiliate because I have seven calls on a board of 11, but I, uh, the call screener has to understand that there are other